We're so familiar with the geography of our planet that it's hard for us to imagine what the geography was like when the world was covered in ice more than 10,000 years ago. Today, we'll try to show how our planet looked when cold and ice were omnipresent in all ecosystems, how significant the differences were compared to the modern era, and which places ceased to exist after the Ice Age. Humans have been living in this world as a species for approximately 200,000 years. This means that throughout human history, we have witnessed several periods in which global temperatures drop dramatically. But for this video, we are going to consider the maximum peak of the last ice age, which occurred approximately 20,000 years ago. This was the period when temperatures were the lowest. During this period, it is estimated that 8% of the planet's surface and 25% of the land surface was under gigantic glaciers and ice sheets. While today only 3% of the planet's surface and 11% of the land surface are under the ice. In other words, 20,000 years ago, there were more than twice as many glaciers as today. This means that during the peak of the last ice age, there was an additional 56 million cubic kilometers of ice on the planet, which formed mainly from ocean water. This caused sea levels to drop by more than 130 meters, because today's water in the oceans was contained in massive glaciers 20,000 years ago. The drop in sea level caused large areas of Earth that today are several meters below the sea to be exposed and above the sea level of that time, increasing the size of the continents, several islands and even connecting areas that today are divided by oceans and seas. South America Today the only glaciers that exist are found mainly in three areas of the world, Antarctica, the North Pole, and the Himalayas. But during the last Great Ice Age, there were many more glaciers and ice sheets. Because Antarctica has always been the area with the most glaciers and ice on the planet, during the last Great Ice Age, the ice caps extended several kilometers around the continent, connecting Antarctica with South America. So there is a possibility that the animals in southern Argentina could cross the Southern Ocean walking from America to Antarctica. In addition to connecting Antarctica with South America, the Patagonian ice sheet extended as far as the Andes Mountains in Peru. At the same time, the most mountainous regions of Venezuela and Colombia were also covered with ice that formed enormous glaciers, which extended for hundreds of kilometers, forming a very different polar environment from the one that is currently in both countries. Today, only the remains of what were once massive glaciers that stretched across the entire Andes mountain range remain. We must remember that the water of the seas and oceans represents an obstacle that prevents the ice from spreading. So it will always be more accessible for ice to accumulate on Earth than on water. For this reason, the most significant changes would occur in the Northern Hemisphere, since it is where the most significant amount of emerged Earth is found. Before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can improve them for you, the viewer. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by making sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily videos. North America 20,000 years ago, what is now Canada was covered entirely in ice, extending to the northern part of the USA. It is thought that the glaciers extended in the mountainous areas from Canada to Mexico, covering not only the North Pole but also a line in the central part of the three countries that make up North America. The North American ice cap retreated and melted as the planet warmed, creating the famous Great Lakes in the US and Canada. As we mentioned before, one of the most significant changes at this time was the decrease in sea level. Thanks to this, land bridges were created that today are covered by water. One of the most famous is the Beringia Land Bridge, today known as the Bering Strait. Although today it would be tough to believe that our ancestors could cross from one continent to another through this water-filled strait, thousands of years ago this site had no water and in its place was an emerged plain covered with ice that lasted for several tens of thousands of years, time in which not only our ancestors ventured to explore these unknown lands, but also other species of animals. In that period, there was a slow but progressive expansion of various species of animals that would settle in the territories of North America 
to later migrate to South America in search of more temperate climates and more edible plants. Europe On the European continent, the scenario was much more drastic since an ice sheet was formed that extended from the British Isles to Siberia. In the case of the Mediterranean Sea, many scientists believe that if the sea level had been lower and plate tectonics had not yet caused such a pronounced drop as it is today, it is likely that the Strait of Gibraltar was in this period closed, connecting Europe with Africa, thus separating the Mediterranean Sea from the rest of the oceans, turning it into a gigantic lake or even dividing it into smaller lakes, which would have a small frozen part in the northern part that borders Italy, Austria, and France. In addition to the notorious changes in the seas, the extension of the ice cap of the North Pole would have blocked the passage of the Yenisei and Obi rivers, which since they could not flow into the Arctic Ocean, the water would have accumulated in Siberia, causing the creation of a vast lake in western Siberia, which would have an extension of more than 800,000 square kilometers. As in the Andes of South America, an ice sheet was also formed in the European Alps with glaciers that flowed into the Mediterranean Sea. While in the part that currently belongs to Russia, it only underwent a few changes and was covered with large sheets of ice. Interestingly, this region is much colder than North America or Europe. So why didn't the ice sheets extend as far as eastern Siberia if it is a colder area? The answer is that the air currents from the Pacific Ocean transport most of the water and humidity to the east, that is, to the American continent. In turn, during this time, the emerged surface increased and moved the coast further east, moving away the wet streams. In the north of the continent, the ice sheet and the receding waters would completely drain the Celtic, Baltic, and North Seas. Thanks to this, Great Britain, Ireland, and Scandinavia were connected by a land surface whose oceans are currently located. But even though this region would be connected by land, it would be covered by a thick layer of several meters of ice. This gives us a better perspective of how 20,000 years ago on Earth, glaciers and icy and frigid environments were much more common than they are today. Asia The continent that suffered the most changes during the last Great Ice Age was the Asian continent. Since being made up of lower lands, Earth connections were formed due to the drop in sea level. In the case of the Himalayas, the ice sheets were bigger than they are today, covering parts of India and China. In turn, the shallow seas surrounding Japan were completely dry at that time, so this country was connected to the Asian continent. That's right, 20,000 years ago, Japan was not an island but was instead connected to South Korea thanks to the drop in sea level. This connection created a massive lake in Asia's interior, bordering Japan, China, Russia, and Korea. During this time, the Yellow Sea did not exist, and in its place, there was an emerged surface that connected China with the Korean Peninsula, Japan, and Taiwan. Another significant change that it would be possible to observe during this time in the Asian continent would be in the Indonesian region, as in Japan. The drop in sea level caused all the islands that make up the region to be connected by an emerged surface that it would adjoin Borneo, Sumatra, Java, and South Asia, thus creating the region known as the Sunda Lens. If someone could travel back in time to observe from space this part of the world 20,000 years ago, it would be completely unrecognizable. Some specialists think that the Sunda Lens region would extend until it connected with the Philippines. Thanks to this terrestrial connection, the animals of the Asian continent such as elephants, apes, tigers, and rhinos could migrate on foot until they populated all the islands of the region. Just as the Yellow Sea was drained by the falling seas, the Persian Gulf was also wholly drained, giving rise to a landmass that connected Saudi Arabia with Iran and in turn connected Asia with the African continent in two points turning the Red Sea into a landlocked lake. Oceania Just as Asia underwent significant changes during this time, Oceania underwent many changes. Currently, the islands of Australia and New Guinea are separated by the Torres Strait. But during the last ice age, that strait did not exist. Instead, an emerged land connected Australia and New Guinea, thus forming a single continent that was also connected with the island of Tasmania. This continent would have the name of Sahul, and with a size of 12 million square kilometers, 
it is possible that it was as big as Antarctica is today. As if that were not enough, the temperatures would have caused Tasmania to be covered in massive glaciers, so even this hot and desert place would not have escaped the power of glaciers. For their part, the two islands of New Zealand would have been united into a single gigantic island equally covered in glaciers. Africa Finally, the African continent would be the least affected by the glaciation. However, global temperatures meant no tropical forests like they are today in the Congo. Africa did not have large glaciers like America or many emerging lands like Asia. On this tour, we have observed that the power of nature is sometimes relentless and can completely transform the landscapes and nature in which we live. Thousands of years ago, the Earth was unrecognizable due to the abundance of ice. Is it possible that one day this frigid environment will take over our planet again? Could there be another ice age again? Let us know your opinion in the comments.